Hey guys, going on ASB and welcome back to another Moonrise Reveal Reaction video. This one is a little late because I completely forgot to record it yesterday, so we're recording it the day that it came out for everybody. Uh, and I'm doing two video recordings today. You'll see one today, um, the one you're seeing right now probably, and then the one uh, tomorrow is uh, going to be the latest reveal that came out today for Clashbackers. However, I forgot to do this yesterday, so therefore we're doing it today. We have the Ant Titan line. For anyone who does not know, we had uh, our Art Varum in the tournament packs. It was a pullable, you could pull an, a card slightly early in Art Varum. We do not know, it mentioned a card called Ant Titan. We don't know what that is, so we're gonna see what those cards are. I'm about to reveal one of the most epic Earth Elestrals we've ever created. I completely forgot. I want to mention one thing. Hopefully the audio sounds good. I got a new microphone. So uh, if the audio sounds bad, let me know in the comments. It should sound fine. I tested it out. It sounds pretty fine. If you think it's too loud, too quiet, let me know in the comments. Created in one of my favorite designs and effects. I'm so excited for this one. Strap in. Let's do it. Let's go. And tighten that whole ant line. Let's We're go. down 32 days until Moonrise. Well, they're ant eaters, or at least our is. And I hope is. you guys have been digging our reveals. A couple things. Don't forget to check out our Lestrals Clash Kickstarter going on right now. You do not want to miss it, and there's only a few days left to back. Here it shows we just hit 400,000. Last I checked, we are at like 430,000, guys. We are getting close to seven days remaining. Get your backs in or tell your friends anything like that. Whatever you got to do, get it up as high as you possibly can. Let's oh, yeah. go. Kickstarter backers get these videos a day early, so don't miss out on that. Without further ado, let's talk about the brand new reveals. Let's go. A few months ago when we revealed our organized play series one Interesting. Pass, there was a Coliseum. special celestial card in there that had never been seen before, and that was Stellar Ardvarum. Stellar Ardvarum had a really and I pulled it out of my very first tournament pack, man. I was so freaking happy. Really unique effect <laughs> that involved insectoid elestrals, and it's time for us to break down the entire Ascension line. Who is Ardvarum? Who is Ant Titan mentioned on its card? And much, much more. So first up, let's, let's talk see. about Ardbud. I'm not lying when I say that I think Ardbud could fundamentally change Ardbud, a lot yes. of decks. In so uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Maybe I'm completely, maybe I might be going completely crazy. Uh, I mentioned a card. Uh, that I that I heard people saying were crazy. This was that card. However, I looked at it again. It seems like it was not this card. It does seem like it was actually something from yesterday's video. I don't know exactly what it was, but um, this was not the card that I saw people saying were crazy. I did see some people saying this card were crazy, but not in the context that I was looking at. But let's see what this card does. First Earth this card is actually in the nuts. set. So it let's is a two attacker with one defense, a one cost Earth that says you can disenchant a spirit from your insectoid cards in order to special ascend this Ardbud to Ardvarum from your deck. What that means is if you have another insectoid card on your field, okay. whether it be a Rhinemph in your rune row, whether it be a Viscerous in attack position on your field, whatever it may be, you can disenchant a spirit from that insectoid to allow this Ardbud to, to ascend, ascend into an Ardvarum. Ardvarum. But the real effect does not have to be from itself. Oh, okay. is it's received. It cannot be from itself. It's not an insectoid. Interesting. Okay. When this Ardbud receives one or more Earth Spirit, you can search your deck for a one Spirit Insectoid Elestral and add it to your hand. This okay. This becomes immediately one of the strongest search tools in the game, as you can search out cards like Viscerous, you can search out cards like Specterus, and I'm sure you can think of the incredible potential with Toxion, Toxic Swarm. Yeah, many. we're gonna have to like try to like figure that one out. I will say I don't think this card's gonna be searching Specterus, Toxion, or Toxic Swarm because they're not in element. Viscerous, I could definitely see. But the fact that, like, it, I don't think it's going to search them. I think it's only going to search things within its own element. Unless you're playing, like, sort of, like, uh, Earth Winds kind of deck where you can mix and match. And then maybe, like, I could see, like, a Toxic Swarm being searched. I don't expect that to be the way you use this. I think you, you're you using this to search either Viscerous or some new Insect cards that we're going to be seeing and, and or have already seen in the past. So... Let's just keep on anymore. going. And this was certainly inspired by the A Drive Divine, which is a divine rune that allows you to search insectoid elestrals. Ardbud is able to do it with just one cost elestrals, but again, the pool of insectoids that I can search is incredible. And the fact that it's a repeatable effect because it's a receive effect, I think it changed the way a lot of decks work. I think this card is very, very strong, and I can't wait to see what that you That is actually something I completely I looked over, I think. Yeah, so on cast you search. I didn't even realize that. It is an on cast search. Um the, the thing that's kind of weird is that you can't disenchant from itself to ascend. I was really hoping it could be a thing where, like, you next onto it, disenchant, ascend it, but that's not, in, that's not, that is in fact it's not how that works. It's kind of upsetting, but because it's a receive effect, whatever. It changes the way a lot of decks work. I think this card is very, very strong. 
and I can't wait to see what you guys do with Aardvark. It's good, but it depends on the insects that are in the game. If insects are very powerful, then it will be powerful. Now, just to recap what Aardvarum does. Aardvarum, Aardvarum is here it is. a attacker with three defense and becomes Earth and Lunar. This card we already know. The fact that when it's cast, you can search your deck for an insectoid card and add it to your hand. Yep. So this allows you to grab any insectoid card, not just a one This card's card. also you not an insectoid. I'm so confused. An insectoid this is a very unique effect because it's not just targeting your own insectoid elestrals. You can target and destroy your opponent's insectoid elestrals as well. So either one will fulfill that cost, which means this is an incredible counter to a lot of those cards I just mentioned, like Viscerous and Spectrous, where you cast it out and you get the true, opponent true. insectoid. If your opponent's running insectoids, you can destroy them. And then if you do, you may special ascend this Ardvarum to Antitan from your hand or deck. So it turbos in to Antitan, which is super cool. Now I want to mention that the design of this elestral is obviously based on the Ardvark. So currently the way that I'm seeing this work out is kind of strange um because you have you have Ardbud uh being able to search an insect and then you disenchant from your insect to ascend it and then obviously you go into and titan not in titan Ardvarum which can then search another insect and destroy an insect to a special ascend into and titan it's not a, it's not something that I think is very consistent it's a slow ascension line it is currently a very slow ascension line the benefit to it being slow with the exception of what we haven't seen in anti-titan is the fact that you're getting a a bunch of search tools there are both ardvarum and ardbud search an insect so you're getting uh, for the for the downside of it being a slow ascension line you get in return basically a plus two assuming you are able to go into Ardvarum maybe even more if you're able to activate Ardbud multiple times so it is kind of interesting it's very very interesting to see that um we'll have to well see what Corp this last Power, one is Titan though let's see that's where the name origin comes let's see what anti is now it's time to reveal the beast himself and titan one of 11 my favorite eights. designs very first thing i looked at was an 11 8. Eight. okay an interesting defense, interesting let's Earth, see one lunar that says you can discard an insectoid card from okay your hand or the target and destroy a card so you have the freedom if you have more insectoid cards in your hand that you okay this effect is good um that might sound hypocritical based on what I said yesterday with um, Oystillery. Oystillery is a two cost water, uh, or is it water lunar? It might be two, it might be a water lunar. I don't quite remember. I think it's two cost water that allows you to discard a water card to target and destroy a card. The reason why I think this is, I think anti is better than Oystillery. And keep in mind, I said Oystillery was a relatively bad card. Just because it was, uh, it's a card that basically requires you to play Oystress, which is not a very good water card. Um, it the now Oystillery has a lot more freedom with what you can discard. Any water card rather than insect card. The reason why I think Antitan so far, just based on th just based off the effect, the one sentence I've read has a better effect than Oystillery. Is because you throughout the course of you ascending into Antitan, you are searching multiple insectoids. You will already have at least search two before you get into this card through special ascending. Therefore, you are likely going to have a lot of insects in your hand with which to deal with your opponent's cards. That is the idea that I personally am seeing and why I prefer Antitan over, over Oystillery because Oystillery, yes, you can just fill your deck with water cards, fair enough. It's not exactly the same, especially since a lot of those water cards you might want to have on the field at one point. You might just be searching your insects. Like If you don't need an insect, you can just search it um, to discard it to then like bring it out later with like a rise. Or if you think there's a um, certain insect in your deck that won't be of any use in the near future, you can search, you can just ascend to your anti-titan, discard that insect, and then you don't have to deal with it anymore. It's no longer in your deck. So, so far, I really like anti-titan for that effect. Search over Oystillery. To toss them into the underworld and destroy something. This effect can be used up to two times in a turn. So and twice per turn. You get the freedom to pop two cards in one turn if you're able to discard your Insectoid Elestrals from your hand. While there Very is an cool. Insectoid Elestral on the field, this Antitan is unaffected by opponent's Elestral effects, which means that if you have an Insectoid or your opponent has one on the field, Antitan has incredible Elestral effect protection. Okay, it's hard to place this one because of how slow the Ascension line is. You Certainly, certainly, you can build a deck around this. 
I don't know how good it's going to be. That is the main, that's the main problem. Especially since this card is still going to be affected by runes, a simple uh, resting EQ will just deal with it. And it's out for good. Uh, to be fair, we are getting a lot less, um, well, the removal options that we have are a lot less frequent now. Obviously, Earthquake's at one. You have the freedom, since this is an Earth deck, to play Earth Earthquake in your deck. Resting in your Laurel, since it's a three cost, will likely just be able to deal with it regardless of whatever your opponent potentially has. Um, it's a weird position for it to be in, in in terms of it resisting removal. However, those are really the only two removal cards in the game currently that deal with it effectively. The only other two that I could potentially think of, they're actually... Four other cards I could potentially think of that can also deal with it. Uh, Cryo, Cryo Blast, which, no, that's not dealing with it. It has eight defense. Unless you find a way to potentially reduce its defense even more, Cryo Blast is not dealing with this card. Um, Boom Bat, guess what? It's unaffected by Elestral, Elestral effects. Uh, and you have to use your normal cast. I feel like if you, even if you don't have an Insect Elestral on your board, you're fine with them wasting the normal cast to take it out. Uh, because then you can just go in with like a Viscerous next turn. I just, I keep doing that, sorry. Um, you can go in like a Viscerous next turn to deal a boatload of damage, so that's good. There are two cards that can deal with it. Um, I don't remember exactly which one it was. I think it was New Moon, Lunar Phase New Moon, the removal card for Lunar Phase, uh, which technically speaking, you could also play in the stack. You will have, you have Lunar, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, so, the reason why... Lunar Phase can deal with it is because, essentially, it's just a removal card. Um, that's basically all there, all there is to it. It can also just uh, allow you to expend an additional three, so you're basically spending four to deal with this anti -in. Another thing, though, that, that, that should be noted is that New Moon can, for a one cost, suppress it. So if you suppress it, and then, for example, you suppress it, it's now a, uh, it now is affected by electrical effects, so now you can run out the Boom Bat to destroy it. Um, that is one way you can do it for a less, lesser cost. It's a bit of a convoluted, and it is a two-card combo in order to pull that off, but so far, that's not that bad. The best way I think you can possibly deal with this, assuming that it has its protection, is with PTA. On cast, you just PTA it. Uh, yes, you are spending four total spirits to deal with it. I think that might be beneficial to you, depending on what the board state is. Um, but those realistically, with the exception of EQ resting, are the best ways to deal with it. And obviously EQ resting are both at one. So your options for dealing with a card like this are very few and far between. I feel like this is good. I just think the Ascension line is, is very, very slow. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, the deck might just play slow and it'd be fine. Uh, if it's like more so a, um, a mid-range style deck rather than a super aggro based deck, then sure, like obviously the Ascension line for that is going to be uh, much slower than anything else. Um, I, that's just like the only concern I potentially have with this is that the Ascension line is very, very slow. There are probably some combos you can make to make it a little bit faster, but I imagine those are probably going to be three, four, five card combos to get this anti-in out like very, very soon. I think this card is good. I think the Ascension line is very slow. I'm so therefore I'm uncertain. I feel like the entire Ascension line is good, but as I keep saying, it's slow. It is very, very slow. Um, and I don't really have a lot of the insectoid. You know what? While we're here, let me quickly look up the insectoid cards uh, just to get sort of an idea. I'm not going to like list out all of them right now, but I want to basically just go through them um, and kind of just like, I just basically want to go ahead and look at them. See basically, uh, oh, can I not? search oh there it is subclass okay um so let's look at though it's for the most part one cost insectoids Ardvarum can search any uh but art bud which is the easiest card to do can only be one cost so let's look at currently just the one cost insectoids uh carry on which supposedly carry on actually will have a, a support card in this uh i forgot what carry on does though let's just quickly take a quick look when it's destroyed in battle, target the election Electro destroyed it. Take control of that Electro and move it to the Euro Electro or into the end phase. I don't expect that card to be uh, the card that you search. So, uh, unfortunately, I am going to have to say a big fat no on that one. Uh, Cyanectar, Frostmite, Nobby. Can search Nobby, and it is already in Lunar Sim. You never know, maybe. Humbust, Ignector, Larvacell, Nimbug, Rhynymph, Spectaris, Spy Nymph, Toxion, Toxiswarm, Viscerous, Warmite. Uh, those are all the one costs. Uh, let's, I guess let's take a look at the two, three. 
Uh, there are obviously the ones that have been there. Ha there have been some insects that have been revealed uh, that um, I haven't that I haven't listed because they're not yet on the play network. Those cards I'm kind of forgetting. I think oyster, weirdly enough, I think oysters as well is an insect. Um, so there is basically one thing there. Let's look at the two three cost uh, insectoids: Anisel, Charcoon, Syracoon, Cyclovenom, Flammamoth. Fluoracne, Galvenum, Humbust, Phosphosal, Polaracne, Rhinosex, Spine Nymph, Stratomoth, Waspivy, Waspire. I'm not too convinced by the cards that I can search. Um, obviously, there could be a lot more that has yet to be revealed and a lot more that I'm forgetting about. So there are those sort of ideas. Uh, ideas. I'm not the most convinced. I think the most likely scenario is you search Viscerous Spectaris. I think those are the two most likely cards that you search um, because if you just get a Viscerous out, you can swarm the board. Then, you are, then you're able to go ahead, uh, use your Ardvarm, pop one of them that you swarm the board with, go into the Anti-In, and you would still control a um, you would still control an Insected Elestral, so therefore your Anti-In would have the, um, the protection. I feel like Viscerous works very, very well with this deck. Um, and we already know Viscerous is a good card, so maybe, you never know, like maybe it actually is good. You can just also turbo out Viscerous, you already, you're already playing, um, your Ardbud, your Ardvarum. Why not play Rummagem in there as well? Have nine total search targets, uh, for Viscerous. I, I, it's a deck that I feel like will be good, but I have to test around with it to really get a good understanding of exactly how good it is. Until then... I'm not the most convinced. And also should be noted, Ardvarum is not searchable throughout this entire... Oh, wait. It doesn't need to be searchable. I can ascend. I'm stupid. Never mind. You're good. Um, so we'll quickly re recap everything once the video is over. Maybe I think that's basically it. Than you can imagine. This but I'm interested. Very, very cool, and I think I'm very intrigued by it. With Ardbud being able to search out Insectoids, Ardvarum hitting the field and having the ability to destroy something to ascend, and then Antitan being able to discard those Insectoids to blow up your opponent's field has a tremendous amount of power, and I'm very excited for this brand new 3-cost Celestial coming in Moonrise. Now to leave you guys on a little treat, one of our brand new serialized Stellars in Moonrise is none other nice. than Stellar Ardbud. And I love that. Art. He sick, just looks sick. So cute. I love this card, man. I can't tell you enough. <laughs> cool card, I think cool Ardbud card. And the anti Titan line are just phenomenal. And this is one of the stellars that I am most certainly going to be chasing after when Moonrise opens those pre orders on November. So let's just quickly, I want to quickly, I noticed one thing about Ardbud that I want to quickly take the time to, to mention. Uh, Ardbud has to disenchant one from your insects to special ascend, and Ardvarm has to pop one to get into end Titan. Um, if you're only playing one cost, maybe you're not. Uh, obviously, we've already discussed Ardbud, Ardvarum, and Titan. None of them are um, none of them are insectoids, so you can't just like disenchant one from them or destroy one of them. In order to do it, you have to facilitate your deck with other insectoid cards, which is kind of an issue with this deck. I feel like. Um, however, if we do go down that exact path that I mentioned with Viscerous, um, you just swarm your board with three Viscerous. You cast Ardbud, or maybe you go Ardbud, search your Viscerous, and do that next turn. Um, Ardbud will be able to, well, you can't do it next turn because you, you, if I, there's no main phase two. You have to attack with the Viscerous into the battle phase, whatever. Uh, Ardbud would be able to disenchant from your Insectoid the Special Ascend. Then you would have to pop an additional one. If you're only playing, um, um, if you're only playing one cost Insectoids, chances are you are going to have to, uh, destroy two of your own Insectoids in order to get, uh, and Titan out. Maybe that's not that bad. I feel like it's not It's not the best. I feel like the best way to do that would be Viscerous, swarm the board with three Viscerous, um, cast Ardbud, disenchant one from a Viscerous to Special Ascend into Ardvarum, Ardvarum, pop one of the Viscerous to Special Ascend to Antitan. You still have one, in, um, you have Antitan, you still have one Viscerous on board, which then allows you to get the Antitan's protection effect. So I'm not... And through that, you will be searching two additional insectoids, um, which can then allow you to pop a card on your opponent's board. I'm not the most convinced by that. I could potentially see it. It requires some setup, but I could potentially see this being fine. Um, but, I'm again, I'm skeptical. I am actually a bit skeptical about this Ascension line. Uh but we'll see how that exactly that goes. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you slap the like button. It's Graf for more. Hope to see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.